Today's Wednesday, June 17, 2015, and you're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show. The Elevator Radio Show is a proud supporter of the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation. To find out how you can make a difference, visit their website today at www.esf.org. Hey, everybody, got a, a good show for you today, short and sweet, the way I like it. So um, stay tuned. Here it comes. You're tuned in to the Elevator Radio Show a weekly program dedicated to covering news and information on elevators, escalators, and moving walkways. Produced in the wee hours of the morning, a new show is uploaded every Wednesday, sometimes even before you get out of bed. Listen to some of the comments sent in from our audience. Rob from New York writes, Tom, are you f***ing insane? You actually get up at 2 a.m. each Wednesday to put this show out? Man, you must love elevators. Tim from Illinois writes, I'm not sure why I listen, but ever since I tuned into the first show back in 2007, I've been addicted. Matt in Texas writes, I like your safety messages, Tom. It's important to remember them each and every day. And he also adds, When am I going to win the monthly prize pack giveaway? Ron from California sent this in. Despite your inability to pronounce words in the English language, I tune in each week and am glad that you offer this service to the industry. It's better than Google News Alerts. Sarah from Washington writes, Love the show, Tom, and look forward to it each week. I'm glad I signed up for the newsletter. You provide a valuable resource for the industry, not only for North America, but worldwide. Enjoy the show. And now, here's your sleep-deprived host, Tom Seibert. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Great to be here this Wednesday morning. Yeah, it's good to be alive, I'm telling you. It's one of those weeks where I feel like I'm just getting busier and busier and busier, and and that usually happens when... You know, you've got some stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks and all that good stuff. So, yeah, it's great to be here this Wednesday morning if you're joining us for the very first time. Welcome to the Elevator Radio Show podcast. This is show number 402. Holy moly. And uh, we are uh, we are here. We are broadcasting to you as live as we can be from the wonderful, wet, windy city, Chicago, Illinois. Uh, the most recent Blackhawks uh, Stanley Cup winners, hurrah, hurrah. And for those of you who don't live in Chicago or are not a Blackhawks fan or do not like hockey, This that really doesn't matter to you whatsoever. So, uh, But City of Chicago is pretty excited for the, the Hawks winning their uh, uh, the Stanley Cup on, uh, gosh, what night? Was it Monday night? I don't know. Yeah, it was Monday night, right? I'm losing track of my, uh, my days here. But congratulations to them. Uh, I think they're going to have their uh, big wing ding on Friday in terms of uh, supporting uh, the parade and all that good stuff. So more, more to come on that. Um, anyway, in terms of last week was a busy week for me. Uh, Wednesday was the, the Chicago cruise. I want to thank, uh, personally, everybody who supported that event, the sponsors. I want to thank the, uh, attendees had a wonderful, wonderful night on the lake. I got some kind of Gannett flying around here. And yes, I said Gannett. Oh, almost got that one. All right. You're watching me on the video. This looks a little silly. We'll get them later. Or it will end up in my coffee, which typically that's what happens if, anyway, extra protein. But no, it's great to see everybody who came in for the event and uh, wonderful time. Good food, great company, and it was uh, nice to see many of you who listened to the program and many of you who came in from out of town to support the event. I don't have the final numbers in terms of what we raised for in terms of like clearing after expenses and whatnot were paid, but uh, without your support, we could not have uh, have have done what we did and each year we we have some some great supporters out there and that's greatly appreciated long night though obviously you know i did the show wednesday morning uh the cruise docked 10 p.m didn't get home until probably about 11 it was a long long day for me i'm sure it was long for many of you out there as well um which is good next week we're headed to elevator u in uh, columbus ohio or i am heading there actually many of you are heading there as well looking forward to seeing many of you who listen to the program as well. Uh, I do not know if I will have a show next week. I'd love to do it. Um, but as we have done or not done in the past, it's been kind of difficult to throw a show together on the road so quickly. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a try, see if we can't muster something up with some new, uh, new equipment, and uh, we'll see how that, how that goes. Um, the next two weeks are going to be busy because next week I'll be in Columbus and the week after I'm going to be in California. So there may, there's not going to be a show in two weeks, just to give you a heads up. And um, so I'll try to give a recap in two weeks. But worst case scenario, there may not be a show the next two weeks and we'll come back 
uh, that first week in uh, in July. But I'll try to put a post up online on the Facebook page so that everybody's kind of a you know up to date. Nobody thinks I've fallen off a cliff or I'm suffering some terrible tragic disease or whatnot. So anyway, uh, got a today's show. When I started looking at all of the articles, it was a show that. Oh my goodness, there were so many accidents relating to construction workers and construction. Well, actually, I don't, I don't know if so many is really the correct, proper term. There were too many, I should restate. And um, so, you know, make sure you're, you're safe out there, you're careful, and uh, we can prevent some of these incidents from occurring if we all work together. That's, that's the critical key. So, um, also have some, some, uh, some accidents that occurred with toddlers or younger kids on escalators, even in most of the articles citing that it was related to uh, playing on escalators. So again, our work is not even close to being done in terms of educating the world, educating parents about how important it is to ride elevators and escalators safely. And uh, that's really, we it seemed to have some communication gap loss here and, and, uh, we got to get back to that. We got to we got to support uh, the Elevator Scholar Safety Foundation with uh, the new Safety Rider program. And I'm not just talking about kids. You know, we have we have to we've got our work cut out for us at the foundation. In the sense that we're trying to minimize, prevent, um, you know, incidents from occurring by trying to teach them how to ride equipment safely. And what is common sense to you and I, as I've said in the past is not necessarily common sense to those who have children or those that are going to the mall and those that after the fact of a, of a child having an injury due to uh, improperly riding an escalator or playing on the equipment, um, you know, that's when they realize, oh my gosh, I never knew. So let's, let's see what we can do in terms of helping the foundation, the Elevator Escalator Safety Foundation, in, in uh, raising, they're, they're about $46,000 shy of funds to complete their budget number for the 2015 fiscal year. What that means is they need that much money to raise for the program. And while many of us think that, okay, well, they, they're raising funds for, you know, through this fundraiser, that fundraiser, it's, it all makes a difference. I'm not meaning to discount that, but in, in you know, when you look at the Chicago crews that maybe had, I don't know, Fifteen thousand dollars in income. The expenses were there as well to rent a boat. So clearing is clearing the the bank or the what's left over is maybe closer to four thousand, five thousand, which is great. Um, but there's still smaller numbers to get to that forty six thousand uh, dollar range. So uh, please donate today. Uh, there's a couple ways of doing it. You can get an invoice. You can donate online through their credit card. Uh, but please support them any way you possibly can, so that the 2015 fiscal year is, uh, or actually the next budgeted year is 2016, is not uh, being strangled by um, by this program. Plus, we have other work to do. We are looking for new programs, uh, new program development for advertising online. Lots of stuff that we are looking to um, kind of springboard off of, so that we can get that message out. So. Enough of my soapbox, enough of my, uh, my recap, and uh, get right into the news next. So stay tuned. Here's the news up next. Let this week's news stories give you a lift on what's happening in the vertical transportation arena. Each news segment is organically dug and fresh with news stories of the week. Got lift? If not, stay tuned. Okay, I guess the only consolation with uh, the accidents that occurred regarding, you know, with escalators, none of them were local, you know, in terms of uh, being in the United States or Canada or North America, which I guess is good. It's still not good to read this. This article coming from the Star Online, it was through a few articles. I think this was in Asia Pacific. Oh, Kuala Lumpur. So it was in Singapore, not Singapore, uh, Indonesia. Maybe it was Singapore. Anyway, uh, apparently, a toddler loses hand in another escalator accident. Ouch! Got their hand caught in an escalator at the KL Central um, facility. Man, this should never happen, right? In Malaysia, just not good. So, yeah, kind of scary. So that's uh, frightening, and you know, you know, there's no reason why we can't. Uh, 
the foundation can't put a program on that reaches internationally so people can uh, share that. I mean, the, the program's already d- being distributed in Australia, in India. So, uh, so let's uh, spread that word as, as much as we can. Okay, former UMass Lowell uh, student was charged in an elevator uh, arson. And yeah, you, oh gosh, ad choices. Shush. Turn this stuff off. Oh, man. Yeah, now there's nothing free about Google Chrome, that's for sure, right? Opt out. Every time I opt out, nothing happens. Does that happen to you? Yeah, I'm sure there's blockers out there too. But anyway, in Lowell, um, apparently a 22-year-old former UMass Lowell student has been charged with arson of a dwelling after he was accused of setting a small fire in the ceiling of an elevator at the UMass Lowell Inn and Conference Center in March. Okay. Uh, anyway. Shouldn't be read, shouldn't be reading these kind of articles either. Okay, apparently uh, Donald Trump has thrown his hat into the presidential campaign, and I guess uh, he's a character. Do you think that? <laughs> do you think that he realizes what he's going to say before he says it? You know what I mean? Um, anyway, you can watch the video, but apparently he launched it on a down escalator that he was riding, and uh, I was like, okay. Uh, and many have said, well, why don't we have a businessman try to run the country? You know, if, if it were only that easy where a president could truly make that big of a difference, um, you know, we would be, I think, in a country that would be maybe perhaps more of a dictatorship. But reality is, is the president is a figurehead. Not that I have any less respect for the man or woman who is in that position. But the reality is, is that um, I don't imagine Donald Trump uh, really, you know, making too much headway. Um, in that uh, in that arena, so okay, wickedlocal.com, another block up ad here. Uh, and Raynham workers remember man killed in elevator crash at Assembly Square in Somerville. Apparently, iron workers are remembering the construction worker who died at Assembly Square Friday as well, like as a well liked family man. Um, Ronald Morse, 40 of Hooksett, New Hampshire, was killed, and another construction worker was injured when they were installing. The hoist of a temporary elevator um, at this uh, construction site. Apparently, it pulled away from the build from the building and crashed to the ground 30 to 40 feet up. Oh, scary. I have a little more information on that article, um, you know, further down in the in the links here. So, uh, yeah, it's awful. One killed and one severely injured. This is actually the same uh, video. Let me see if we can play this without blaring you. Love the music there. Actually, we're going to play the uh, video from uh, some news source here that I'm not quite sure what it is. But as soon as it goes in, we'll uh, we'll play it. Okay, 11 seconds left. Three, two, one. Here we go. Oh crud! I just embedded it by accident, and now I can't hear it. Wonderful. Uh, close. Massachusetts, where an investigation is underway this morning after one person is killed and another seriously injured in a crane accident. Our Jeff Saperstone live on the scene there. And in fact, LaToya, no work is being done at this large construction site here this morning as federal and state investigators looking into how this happened. A smashed construction elevator sits on the ground at this site in Somerville. One worker is dead and another in the hospital this morning. The investigation into how this accident happened now well underway. A cab on the hoist pulled away from the building and ejected two men who were found adjacent to the work site. A hoist cab, which is essentially a temporary elevator, somehow broke free as it was being installed Thursday. This building is set to be home to the administrative offices for Partners Healthcare. The two workers employed by subcontractors. Suffolk Construction, which is in charge of the overall project, says they take safety very seriously and all protocols were being followed. We've had no OSHA violations on this site. It's been a very safe project up and up until today. Well, today is your day. No word on the names of those victims this morning. We're waiting to get word back from OSHA on an update on this investigation. Yeah, that's going to take a little while Uh, from OSHA anyway. Terrible tragedy. Um, yeah, you think something's going to change in Massachusetts? Probably. I don't know. Kind of scary. You wonder what happened, uh, whether or not those that were installing it were, were trying to do so, and uh, just kind of scary. Uh, those construction lifts are, are temporary. So, anyway. Okay, preschooler hospitalized after getting foot stuck in escalator. This is an accident that occurred in New Zealand. Uh, again. 
uh, frightening. And uh, if parents, we all knew what was going on. Look at the look at the look at the image of this thing. It's got a photo of this this shoe that's like stuck, I guess, in the end of the the side of the uh, the escalator, and then into the comb teeth. Okay, the reality is, is lift your freaking feet at the end of the escalator. Don't put them by the sides. This is all common sense. I'm telling you. Should be. Scary. Okay, watch your wallet next time you ride an elevator, especially in the Washington, Massachusetts, sorry, Washington Transit System. Police need your help identifying two people caught on elevator, uh, on, on camera, pickpocketing a man in northwest D.C. inside an elevator. The video shows three men in the elevator. This was not Wamana, I apologize. The video shows three men in an elevator. When the doors open, one man gets out and pretends to drop something to distract. Okay, great. Yeah, nothing like robbing a, a poor old man who you know needs a cane to get around. Come on, you guys suck. I gotta tell you that. So hopefully they catch these guys, and um, I would just catch these guys. I hate I hate scum like this. I know hate is a strong word, but I can use it in this case. I think. Anyway, so watch your wallet next time you ride in an elevator. Okay, need the elevator fixed? Don't call the don't call the fire department. Memphis, uh, that's coming from Channel Five in Memphis, Tennessee, I believe. Um, I'm not going to list this, but apparently, uh, Memphis Fire Department called to fix stuck elevators at Bass Pro Shops. Hey, media, media people out there, Channel Five News, NBC. Uh, this is a bad title uh, because elevators are not fixed by firefighters. So the reality is, is that uh, the elevator had stopped and the firefighters were called to, I guess, try to get them out, not so much fix the elevator. So, idiots. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Curious George in the Big City, Elevator World Unplugged has a cool post, um, kind of showing some photos about uh, the book uh, Curious George, that lovable monkey. Um, visiting the big city and what he's not doing correctly. And here's one where he's kind of hanging by a chandelier and f flying over an escalator. And you got to realize that uh, that's not safe. But I'm a big fan of Curious George. Big fan. Always loved his books. Not his books, whoever wrote them. Um, but I like this post by, um, by Elevator World. Very uh, kind of nice, nice reminiscence there of, uh, of days gone by. Okay, Van Nuys West entrance is closing for three years uh, for an escalator um, uh, project, and this is in uh, Wamadas, part of their original plan to replace four escalators at the Van Nuys Metro Station, and also Wamada says that work will begin one week from today. Three years seems to be a long time, but the reality is is that uh, you know escalators are not required for accessibility issues; they're somewhat more of a I don't know, more of a convenience, I guess you should say, but um, still make it a lot easier to move people, much quicker than stairs. But maybe we would, uh, maybe we would all be a little bit lighter around the waist if uh, we use stairs instead of uh, escalators. Not to say that people, all people, can do that, but still. Okay, construction worker who fell 24 stories riding unsafe lift. Uh, another accident is coming from Daily News in New York. Worker who fell to his death at the Midtown construction site was riding an elevator powered by an unsafe jerry-rigged electrical system. The Daily News has learned. Um, I don't know what the, that means. I, I have no idea. But uh, apparently the lift stall between the 24th and 25th floors. Oh, this is what happened. So uh, one of them jumped out. The other one uh, jumped out but then fell to his death as he fell underneath the car. This is a very common accident uh, that occurs. And But then they're... they're they're citing that the city and building inspectors looking into the cause of the accident discovered that the lift suddenly lost power that day and the electrical system that powered it was installed without a permit. The elevator relied on unapproved, unsafe, unsuitable electrical equipment that shouldn't have been used uh, using documents. show. I guess the city of New York or whoever is inspecting it is, uh, I guess they're considered uh, off the hook. Um, still a tragedy. Remember that um, the best place to be if, you're, if an elevator is, is stalled or not working or stopped, is in the elevator itself, call for help and then uh, be aware of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the dangers around uh, elevators all the time. Um, here's another one. Construction worker killed an elevator shaft. Uh, accident on Baylor campus has been identified. Apparently, this was in Waco, Texas, coming from Channel 
uh, 25 news source. Worker died after being crushed by an elevator at Baylor's new business building. Um, Saturday said 51-year-old Jeffrey Thamer was an independent electrical electrician working for Rosendiff Electric of Dallas. Hmm. Perhaps electricians shouldn't really be uh, working inside an elevator shaft. Be interesting to see what OSHA comes up with uh, on that. So, uh, yeah, elevators are dangerous. Just because it's electrical doesn't mean uh, you can you can work on them if you're an electrician. So, uh, yeah, awful. Uh, terrible, terrible news story for accidents, I'm telling you. Okay, next news article coming from the BBC. This is uh, an elevator system in the UK. New, Staler, new Street Station escal Escalator Faults Top. 802 years, so I didn't really explain that well, but apparently this escalator system shows it had faulted 800 times at the street railway station. What kind of kills me about um, about the article here is, uh, let's see here, okay, they don't really say why, they just throw it out there. Apparently, a program to replace the faulty part on each of them is well underway at no extra cost to the redevelopment. But there's really no indication as to what why they faulted. You know, you think they'd have a little more information there to uh, to share with everybody who might be concerned about why. But yeah, 800 seems like a lot. Um, anyway, okay, the final World Trade Center uh, number two building has been uh, unveiled. You can you can go ahead and check this out. Link is in the show notes. If you can get through this ad. Kind of cool, and uh, I believe they're starting on World Trade Center number three. Um, I'm excited to be working with one of the projects on that. So uh, kind of a, a neat, uh, a neat signature piece. When basically each one of these buildings has equipment that's installed by you know one of the majors, it's cool to have a little piece of the of um, of the pie. Not, and I don't mean financially. I'm just talking about just being part of it. Um, when it comes to uh, to providing equipment for these buildings, so I thought that was pretty slick. Uh, you can go ahead and click on the video at your leisure, or leisure, however you want to say that. Um, boy, heard an escalator accident condition improves. Uh, this is a accident I believe we talked about on last week's program uh, in India, the Hindu. dot com, reporting that after a um, uh, little boy was uh, had his hand stuck in a uh, in an escalator uh, three fingers on his right hand were uh, severed um, they were reattached but um, whether or not they're going to be viable in the future is yet, yet to be uh, you know to be seen your finger should never be through they should be on the handrail they should not be down below or by the side they should be at the handrail on the handrail Ouch. But anyway, he's doing better. Again, you know, <laughs> there's no reason for these kind of accidents. Okay, car elevators are back in the uh, in the news. And we touched on this article a while ago as well. So, but it was uh, brought back up to uh, into the news source or news uh, feed. Uh, Miami Herald reported developer unveils car elevator for Porsche design tower. So uh, more information on that. Check it out. There's a video here. I don't know if it's playing or not, but um, yeah, if you if you need an elevator for your car, you've got a lot of money. That's my that's my determination with uh, with the whole thing. Okay, next news article: Ex Eklund's announces new streamline uh, cab design studio. If you want to uh, find out what that's all about, go over to their website, um, sign in, start designing, get registered. If you want to see what uh, cab design programs they have uh, is offered out there um, and the link is in the show notes and the last news article of the show is the elevator escalator safety foundation needs your help um, so again forty six thousand two hundred dollars needs to be raised before the end of this month 2015 you can you can um, support them by filling out the information here get an invoice answer your credit card information all that good stuff whatever works but let's see if we can't minimize the number of uh, accidents that occur for kids that are still occurring for kids worldwide and, and help get the message out that uh, elevators, escalators, moving walkways are all safe as long as they're ridden properly. And that goes for anything that you do, whether it's walking down the street, whether it is driving a vehicle, a car, riding your bicycle, skateboarding, 
working, whatever it is, everything has some type of inherent danger to it. And if we are all educated on the safety measures of how to make sure we're as safe as possible, not that we want to mandate, make sure, you know, mandate everybody's got to hold an escalator handrail or it's going to be fined $300 by the government. We don't want that. But um, we should all be smart enough to, to figure some of this stuff out. But if we don't throw that message out there, uh, you know, we may never get there. So, um, so support them today. Greatly appreciate that. So, well, that's going to do it for this week's show, everybody. Uh, it's great to have you here. It's great to be here. If uh, you'd like to send me an email, send it to elevatorradioshow at gmail.com. Thanks to everybody who sent me show notes and show links. Greatly appreciate that. Um, and if you uh, have any questions or comments, send them to that email address as well. Visit the website elevatorradioshow at gmail.com. Get subscribed for the news e, e news uh, e newsletter. You're all in your you'll, you'll also be eligible to win the prize pack giveaway. Easy to do. Go to elevatorradioshow.com, subscribe to the blog via email and you'll be all set. So, all right, everybody have a great rest of the week out there. We will talk to you next Wednesday hopefully. If not, uh, we'll be back in 2 weeks, but I'll let you know. Take care everybody. Be safe and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>